Hey, hello everybody, my name is Kubla, I'm bringing you guys video replay cast number 48, and this one is actually not necessarily, I, I guess technically not a video replay cast, um, I kind of cheated a little bit, went on top of Reddit, and just went to one of the casted pages and just said, hey, I'm just going to pick a random game here and just cast it, so, um, I'm doing the caster thing, but this is going to be going under my random pubcast, or not random pubcast, uh, view replay cast, Jesus, I'm all over the place. So this was sent in by somebody, I'm not going to tell you guys who sent it in, because the general subject is the person who, person who sent it in is probably on the team that won, and we don't want no spoilers here, not at all, and um, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know what to expect, I mean, I know what to expect, but I don't actually know what to expect, because, I don't know, anything can happen, like I said, it, it was sent into the Reddit caster page, and um, that that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that the person sent in is probably on the team that won. That just means that uh that it was an interesting game, or so they thought. And you know an another trend that I've saw that I've seen. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the trend at the end. Um, we're jumping ourselves to a captain's mode, so we, so we will be seeing a whole bunch of bands and picks, and that'll be pretty fun. So I can comment on those, make some intelligent statements like life stealer, uh, standard band. I mean, what what else does it say outside of that? Uh, life stealer is really nice since I have a tri lane, according to one of my references before or one of my uh, friends from before from the SCCS but pretty much life stealer in a tri lane is painful even after the nerfs which I thought the nurse would have dealt with the whole the whole entire tri lane situation but um but apparently he's still a P inside tri lane a uh, moon on tree and protected he's been out he basically gives the uh, person who picked him up just a cr incredible early game it makes it super hard for people to dive on like an axe or like uh, well nobody picks axe really but it just makes it hard for people to dive on him like a night stalker I guess night stalker he dives too so uh, having a having a tree and protected band out that basically just means that uh, they're, they're, they're not gonna have as crazy of a good start as they would have had otherwise but um, he, he's a, a map I'm actually beginning to see train protected more and more first band or first picked or second band or second pick and it's actually starting to become one of those common things. Uh, he's slowly but surely replacing the Darkseer who's been replaced a long time ago. But we do see a Nick Assassin band. Nick Assassin, he's just annoying as crap. He basically, once he hits level 6, your supports are no longer safe and sometimes even your carriers are no longer safe. Like if there's an anti mage on the side just farming away and he has like a battle fear and that's about it. Nick Assassin can just show up, nuke him down and then run away. Laughing, laughing, laughing as he collects the gold. Uh, we see a Coddle Band as well on the side of the Dire. And I'm not sure if these guys are, uh, have any teams or anything, but uh, if they did, they will say the team names there. So I'm just going to call them Dire and Radiant because that makes it a little bit easier. And I'm also I'm also going to try try to call these guys by their name as opposed to calling them by a hero, but I can't make any promises, guys, because you guys already know I'm bad at that. But for, for the sake of the person who sent it in, I will try my hardest to call you guys by the name as opposed to just by the hero. And we got a Batrider first pickup. Batrider 70% turn rate slow. That is like one of the most ridiculous things in the entire game. That's the only source of it, and there's no way to speed up your turn rates. Um, your turn rate. The, the only thing I could think of would be a surge from Dark Team. That's basically because it just makes you move faster overall. So may, maybe that helps out with your turn rate too, but probably doesn't. It probably doesn't. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure somebody got surged. And they had to turn around with the sticky napalm on top of them. Then they they will like be turning slow as crap, and then they move fast as crap on the other side of it. So yeah, bat rider first pickup. Nothing bad about a bat rider first pickup. It really doesn't reveal much of anything. It just lets people know, hey, there's a bat rider, and he's gonna do bad things to you if you guys let him get his room to farm. Was bat rider all he really needs is tranquil boots and a uh, blink dagger, and a four staff, preferably a four staff afterwards. But tranquil boots and a blink dagger, he can still do quite a bit of work. And, oh look, there's a dark seer. I told you to just talk about him. And oh, that's another interesting thing. Um, interesting thing. The bat rider was not banned out. Typically, you see bat rider almost always banned out in the first four bands, but he made it through somehow. So he will be he will be getting played inside his game. And uh, like I said, it, do it doesn't really reveal what the dire decide to do or want to do. It just basically gives the radiant an extremely good, solid person to. Pretty much disable the carrier or find somebody for a quick pick off here or there, or to just give them a solid mid if they decide to put him mid. But you can put a bat right inside the jungle, which you do commonly see. Uh, he just goes into the jungle, just farms two camps with flame break or firefly. And we got a guy cut the pickup, guy cut through another one of those standard pickups that you see almost every single match, and it's starting to become a very, very sad thing to me. 
personally, but he, he's a really solid carry because of flat cannon. I mean, late game flat cannon is ridiculous. It basically kills all your supports in like five hits if he has that much damage. Sometimes even two hits. I've been two shot at before by a flat cannon. It's not fun. But in my defense, in my defense, we were extremely underfed, and I was playing a Venomancer. Come on, guys, what do you expect? Um, and there's a ruin pickup on the side of the uh, radiant. They basically just, just, just getting, just trying to shoo away all the Magnus pickups or or Enigma pickup or any big pickup like that to just basically get in the team fight. Although that said, um, in the past two weeks, I guess, I, I guess I say in the past two weeks, I have seen quite a a huge reduction in the amount of people who pick Magnus at all. Like Magnus is completely ignored. And, uh, I, I honestly, honestly can't think of why that would be. I mean, um, I honestly thought his skewer, uh, his skewer nerf would have made him much less pick, but he was still first banned, first pick, uh, for quite a while, but he's finally starting to hit, um, lose his stripe. Anyway, as far as the rest of the bands we see here, we see a Naga Siren ban, we see a Queen of Pan ban. Naga, a little bit weird, um, yeah, re really weird. Maybe these guys are doing their homework, maybe these guys looked up on the, uh, enemy team and said, hey, this person plays a lot of Naga, uh, but Naga just... In, in a tri lane, like, just in general, in a tri lane, uh, Naga can set up some pretty sexy free kills, just throws a net, have a Lashak stun to follow up, or have a Rubik throw a Telekinesis, or have a Lina throw a Lightning Striker Ray, and that's pretty much a dead person, uh, no matter who they are, especially if it's a carry, it's gonna set them back a lot. So, just just gonna shoot her out the pool, pool um, shoot her out the pool, and also Naga's ulti does, does really help uh, engage and disengage fights. Pretty effectively, but it can backfire, but let's not focus on that. Let's focus on the good things, guys. And we got a Wisp ban, or IO, as everybody's starting to call it, but I still say Wisp, because Wisp is awesome. It's more letters, so more letters obviously equal awesome. So apparently, Gyrocopter has the best name on this map so far, because he has more letters. Anywho, but a Wisp ban, uh, Wisp just basically gives the the ability to have a global strat which is always a scary thing to deal with basically what that means is that um, like say anti-mage is on the side on the radiant side just farming away in the top lane and nobody's around then suddenly a wuss can relocate it excuse me relocate it with a with a ck or a tiny or a fin and then they should probably get tp in as well and they can just basically destroy the crap out of anti-mage before he's able to actually react to it or if, if he didn't expect it of course but um, having a global presence is actually a really, really nasty thing to deal with. Um, it can be countered pretty easy just by making sure Wolf doesn't get to that level 6, but that's eas much easier said than done. Uh, Skyrath Mage is the last ban out in this phase for the Radiant. Um, they don't want to face him, I, I can't think of, I mean, ma maybe they're going to be going for a Clockwork. Uh, Clockwork does struggle quite a bit versus Skyrath Mage because he basically throws out the power cogs and then Skyrath Mage throws out all his stuff and Clockwork can't run. So ma maybe they decide to go for a Clockwork. Maybe they're going to be going for something else. I'm not too sure. I can't think of anything else outside the fact that Skyrath Mage does do quite a bit of damage uh, if he is played as a mid. But they have a Batrider on. The, or sorry, no. Yeah, never mind. The the what am I talking about, guys? Guys, I'm honestly drunk. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Uh, the Diary don't have a mid, so may, maybe they're really looking for that Skyrath Mage because Skyrath Mage he will be pretty nice versus a Batrider, I guess. Make sure Batrider can't run away unless Batrider throws that Firefly before he gets silenced. But the uh, Dyer taking a sweet, sweet time thinking about this last pick. Shadow oh, as soon as I say that, they pick, him up. they pick up one. And they pick up a Shadow Demon, a solid support to go along with the Gyrocopter and his tri lane, which I'm assuming they're going to be go for. Um, Darkseer will probably be in the hard lane, Gyrocopter, Shadow Demon plus one will be in the tri lane. More than likely, it's going to be Alina or Lashrak. Those are the typical, typical people you match up with a Shadow Demon. Rubik, he can also match up with a Shadow Demon, but he's obviously on the enemy team already, so he cannot be put on the same team right now. And uh, may, it's, it's highly possible the Radiant were looking for the Shadow Demon as well. But Disruptor. they're going to take a little bit of time. Disruptor is going to be an alternate pickup, I'm Red assuming, team. because Disruptor, he, he, he still does nice as a support. His glimpse is actually really powerful, especially when you're going against people who can like relocate around the map. But Wuss is already obviously banned out, so there's not going to be any, any, of that, any of those shenanigans going on. I, I honestly would actually be really excited to see a Tinker, because I haven't seen Tinker play in quite a while, surprisingly. Like, like no, nobody likes Tinker anymore, which makes you sad. So, so maybe we'll see a Tinker, fingers crossed. Come on, guys. We can do it. We can do it. Come on. If, if we think hard enough, we might be able to get a Tinker pick. Come on, Tinker pick. Come on. I'm thinking. Oh, there went to reserve time. My thinking stopped. That was my water. Sorry. This is actually bad because I'm 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 almost out of water and we're only through the captain's mode. 
We're, we're actually we're not even finished with the captain's mode. Oh boy, this might be a long cast, guys. But look, look um, from looking at what we see on the map so far, though. I can't really tell you much. I mean, the, oh, oh, there's Chen. Okay, Chen is picked up. I can tell you guys a lot of things about Chen. Let me just tell you a little fact, a few facts about Chen. Basically, Chen can get a few powerful creeps and just push the crap out of a tower, and that's that's a really strong, a really strong pushing ability. Um, Darkzy, he can also help out with that with the iron shells on top of, on top of all the creeps that he's killing in the backside. Um, the only counter push that the Radiant have is, at this point is a uh, well thunderclap. You can kind of count that, but Rubik with his zap, and that's really about it. But it's, it's it's not it's not it's not the most impressive push in the world. I mean, Chen by himself he can push pretty well, but he might need somebody else to anti -mage. back him up with push. And we got Anti Mage. Anti Mage is really good at split pushing. Oh my gosh, guys! Let me tell you about the Anti Mage right now. Um, anti Mage split pushing ability is actually pretty strong. Uh, long story short, everybody's everyone his team is fighting in s some on some other lane, and Anti Mage is pushing a lane. And by pushing a lane, I mean he's just farming like he typically wants to do. So he's he's killing two birds with one stone. He's pushing a lane. He's also getting some farm for his 3 a.m., which is his met style, or his heart, which is a heart of Tarask. Uh, OD is going to be a ban out on the side of the dire. They don't want to face him in the mid, and that that's actually a really interesting thing to see because that could be very telling. They might want to go for a puck. Uh, Puck does struggle quite a bit versus an OD because OD just basically makes sure she has no mana to cast, cast her abilities and Puck's abilities do cost quite a bit of mana. But um, we shall see if the Radiant do decide to go ahead and ban Puck out, which I think would be a wise wise ban. Because they do have a few people who are re really reliant on uh, those spells, primarily Batrider, Rubik, and Disruptor. I mean those are the main three people, but Anti-Mage, he's, he's somewhat somewhat relevant um, right and we got a magus a very late magus ban like i said before guys pretty much nobody cares about magus anymore which makes me sad because magus is still pretty powerful but i guess they did something that broke him and we got a blood seeker pickup holy crap what is this what, what is with these blood seeker pickups i think i think i recently saw another blood seeker pickup that did quite well if i'm not no no actually he did bad um he, he was getting harassed to crap it up in mid but that's neither here nor there, that's a different game. Spoilers for whatever the game that was, you guys don't know which one that was though. Unless you go watch all my other videos, which I highly recommend. But I'm really interested to see what the Dire do decide to do with their lanes. Uh, they more than likely they're going to send a Bloodseeker mid and chin into the jungle. Uh, Shadow Demon and Gyarcard will be down bottom and so Darkseid will be up top. So it'll be technically a tri-lane down bottom, but Chin will be in the jungle. Or sorry, tri-lane top. They'll yeah, send the tri-lane top. Um, but it'll technically be a tri lane top, but Chin will be in the jungle. And. They could do some quite interesting things with that, but there's an anti mage. It's hard to lock down an anti mage. They might be able to pick up a disrupt and a Rubik a few times. But I, 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 can't, I can't really see much. Actually, no, no I can't. I, I can't see quite a bit of bad things happening to the Radiant side up top uh, with that tri lane that's pending for them. Um, basically, if, if a Satar can get in position to actually get a stun down, then he can pretty much stop the Rubik from throwing a Telekinesis or stop Disruptor from throwing out his abilities. And uh, once that happens, that's pretty much a free, sh free kill with a Soul Catcher plus a Rocket Barrage. But. We still we still have to wait for that last pick because they could they could potentially send anti to the suicide lane and have another person in the tri lane in a tri lane with the supports, which is not too far fetched of an idea, guys. But we got 22 seconds left up on the timer. These guys are wait taking a sweet 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 time picking up the last pick. Who are they gonna pick is a big question. Come on, you guys can do it. Pick a meepo. I dare you. Nobody picks meepo. Makes me sad. And there's a clockwork. Totally called it before, guys, but they banned out the Skyrath Mage because Skyrath Mage does well versus Clockwork. Like I said, Clockwork throws out the battery or throws out the cogs, and uh, Skyrath Mage just kills them inside of it. So nice little preemptive, preemptive move right there. Also, um, OD, OD does well versus no, no, he, um, they didn't ban OD. Never mind. Yeah, Skyrath Mage does all around well versus Clockwork. Silence plus. Plus, Clockwork's cogs used against them, and it's just painful. Painful things to deal with. Prepare for battle. So, because the game is starting on up, let me go ahead and do introductions. Why is it stuck on that? There we go. Let me go ahead and do introductions. Start off with the rating size on this anti mage. We have all. What is, is, is he seven slotted? No, he's only three. He's only four slotted, guys. Sad days. Uh, we have Getsu on that anti mage. He's going straight up carry as you guys can see he has a calling blade and a style shield. Moving on to this Rubik we see Namiator on him. On this clockwork we see DDO or Do or Dido 
Dodo, -do -do, I, I don't know. Uh, moving on to Disruptor, we see Static uh, with a 4 for the A on that Disruptor. Moving over mid to this Barret, we see Sadness. That is obviously an emote, guys. Uh, that's a card thing. I, I don't know which one that is, but it makes you sad to know that I don't know what it is. And that pretty much rounds out the entire rating side. Moving over to the Dire side, starting off with this Garakot that we see Ray's... Oh, jeez. Uh, whew, okay, okay. We shall call him Riza. Riza. We'll call him Riza. We see Riza on that on that guy because that's, that's actually bringing my memories for me. Uh, moving over to the Shadow Demon, we'll call him Heart. Ace of Hearts and Ace of, Ace of Clubs. That is what that stands for. On that Shadow Demon, on this Chen, we see Mana DMSJ on that Chen. Moving over to mid on this Darkseer. These guys did actually go for mid Darkseer. Cool. Uh, we see Hagrid or. Hargret on the Dark Sea, and last but not least, down bottom on this Bloodseeker, which is the one I'm actually really interested to see what he does, because if he does well, this game might just, just might go good for him. Oh, we see one bone on him, and he has nine tangos. This guy does not want to be moved out of his lane. He knows he's going to be facing a tri lane. He's in a suicide lane. He's going to be in a lot of trouble if these guys do get a quick telekinesis off him, because basically a telekinesis into a, well, okay, never mind. Not much to really follow up. I was going to say a telekinesis into a glimpse could end the life of a blood seeker, but I mean, glimpse doesn't really stun you or anything. It just pulls you back to where you were. And if, well, if blood seeker didn't really get moved from that far, then I'll probably help him out a little bit more because that's how telekinesis did move him a little bit. Anyway, as far as the lane comp goes, uh, you guys can see a tri lane down bottom, Ancient Mage Disruptor, and Rubik hanging out down bottom. I'm uh, moving over to <clears throat> the Dire Size on down bottom. We have. One bone on that blood seeker just hanging out down here, trying to collect whatever XP he can. He has one point in his bloodbath early up. And actually, Static is doing a few little auto attacks to that um, to one bone, just trying to just trying, just trying to make his life a little bit a little bit painful. But one bone doesn't care. He has himself nine tangos now, eight tangos, so he has all the region in the world. Meanwhile, mid we got a sadness on that Batrider versus Hargrit or he oh okay hold on I, I gotta figure this out. Eh, Hagrid, I shall call him Hagrid. Hagrid on the darks here. Uh, he is mid, he's just getting sticky and palmed all up. He needs to be a little bit careful because he has those three stacks. He's getting close to that critical four number. Moving over into the jungle, we see Mana on that chin, just hanging out there, just collecting a few creeps. He has, I think he has two creeps, or he only has one. No, he only has one. Sad days. And up top, which is the last lane to call out, we see on that rattle trap, we see DDO going up against a Garakov of Shadow Demon. And this this, this, this is probably not, the, probably not the most scary thing he's ever seen in his entire life. I mean, he, he's, he's probably seen worse. I mean, what's, what's, okay, Shadow Demon disrupts you, uh, gets a body block with the disruption illusions, and then Garakov the, uh, throws out a rocket barrage, and that, that'll be pretty painful to deal with. But, that's probably going to be hard to, or hard to actually land out, especially if Clockwork Zeta would be quicker on the trigger finger and throw out the power card, or battery assault, before Garakov gets within range for his flat cannon. Or before for his rocket barrage. You guys totally know what I mean. Uh, moving on to the last into the nines, you guys can see right over here on the left side, we see Garakov that has those 12 last hits. So Shadow Demon doing a really good job zoning the crap out of the clockwork, make sure he can't really get anything. But on the converse, we see these uh, the tri lane down bottom. Actually, hold on, we see a big engagement happen down bottom. Disrupt throwing out the wall. Bloodseeker trying to do what he can to juke out the wall, but he's not going to be able to make it out, or make it out of the wall. Um, he does take a, quite a bit of damage, but he will be able to survive. Disruptor wants to go all in, but he can't dive any further. If there was a tree and protect the own side of the radiant side, I would dare say that they would have got that kill. <laughs> but there's none. There's none. Bless you, you're going to eat a few trees, because he's definitely going vegan. Drinks blood and eats leaves. I mean, he's, he's, he's totally vegan, guys. He's totally vegan. He's totally vegan. Actually, no, he's a vampire. <gasps> I knew it. Anyway. On this mid lane, uh, we see dark. Oh, five stacks. There you go. Five stacks on creeps. So these creeps do take, or will be taking quite a bit of damage once got once uh, Bat Rider attacks. And you can see right there, all their HP gone. That's a lot of HP gone just from six stacks. So that can happen to just um, Darks here, which is the scariest thing about it. So if he gets six stacks on top of him, if he gets four stacks on top of him, he might be in a little bit of trouble. As far as uh, the damage coming up from Bat Rider. So Darkseid did throw a celebratory iron shell right on top of his own head. I'm not too sure for what reason, but he threw one there. Why not? And Batrider got five stacks of that sticky nip on the top of Darkseid. Darkseid can surge away if things do get a little bit too hairy, and that's six stacks right there. Batrider might be looking to go in pretty soon. Uh, he he's probably trying to wait for enough mana for both his flame break and his cask or in his uh, firefly. 
He doesn't necessarily need both. Dark Seed gonna go ahead and back away. He doesn't want to be here anymore. Uh, he has eight stacks of sticky napalm. It's like two auto attacks. He's pretty much gonna be down, go, gonna be going down. Meanwhile, down bottom we got Bloodseeker uh, doing quite a bit of damage on top of Rubik. I think Rubik, Rubik was being a little, trying to be a little bit aggressive, but Bloodseeker was able to come out on top of uh, on top of all that. And we see Dark Seed ten stacks of sticky napalm. Will Batra be able to finish off the kills? No. Uh, the sticky napalm stacks do wear out. Dark Seed does surge down bottom, and he will be able to cut off this Batrider. His surge will be back in a few few more seconds. There's a vacuum thrown by Dark Seed. Batrider will be able to catch up to it, but Dark Seed might be able to get the kill on top of his courier. Courier delivers the bottle, and. Uh, yeah, Batrider is going to be able to make it alive. He has a regen room, he pops his Firefly, and Darkseid does a little bit of damage, so Batrider is not regening anymore. And now Darkseid is instantly, the shoe's on the other foot. Darkseid is a little bit trouble. He has surged in another few seconds, and Batrider is not level 6 yet, so he can't really do much uh, as far as his ulti goes. Uh, Darkseid is going to go ahead and run through the fire, but he's not going to make it through the fire. Static on that disruptor, able to finish him off. Pretty good rotation coming up for these guys. Meanwhile, down bottom, we got a, we got one bone, and get to going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Bloodseeker and anti Man just duking it out. They said, bro, we both got two blades, why can't we both just be get along? I'm, I'm just saying, guys, they both got two blades, why, why can't they just get along? They should be friends right now. Meanwhile, in the jungle, Chen just, just farming up his items. Uh, more than likely, he's going to be going for a mech first, which I totally like to see on Chen's. Basically, <laughs> mechs on Chen's. Uh, basically, Chen can actually keep his, keep his creeps healthy. Which is probably one of the bigger things to do. Um, he could be going for arcane boots as well. I'm not sure why he would be going for arcane boots. Maybe he's going for full support if he's doing that. But then again, that would be silly, in my personal opinion. Darkseid throwing a few on his shells, trying to push his creep wave back. Um, I honestly think this uh, mid Darkseid is not it's not the most terrible idea in the world. Um, but potentially, potentially. Well, okay. The question is, who could they send? Who else could they send besides Darkseid? And Barra is probably oh, not Barra. Uh, Let's see if it's probably on. Hold on, hold on, hold that thought. We got Darkseer getting caught inside of a ulti from Batrider. Batrider doing all the damage in the world. Darkseer trying to do what he can to make sure Batrider takes a little bit more damage than he needs to. And Batrider doesn't really care. And you guys just saw right there, Batrider got, what was that, five sticky napalm stacks right on top of Darkseer. And two auto attacks plus, fire, plus a few fireflies plus his ulti, of course. His ulti does do a little bit of damage, if I'm not mistaken. Nope, it does no damage. I am mistaken. Holy crap. Um, that's pretty much a, between Firefly and between auto attacks. Darkseer lost his life, and uh, I mean that's that's primarily auto attack damage. Coming up from sticky, coming up from that sticky napalm. Meanwhile, we got a rotation coming in from Shadow Demon, just placing a few wards right on around the map. Down bottom, the Trine Lane still looking pretty healthy as far as the levels go. Um, Disruptor's level 5 versus Bloodseeker's level 5, so these guys are doing really well in this bottom lane. Um, having a Trine Lane on par, if or in, and possibly doing better than you as a solo person, is not always the best thing in the world, because what that basically means is that... Uh, they do. They have more XP than you because they're splitting the XP three ways, and you're splitting it one way, and they're getting they're on on par with you. That means you're behind. So Bloodseeker not having the most fun in the world. Clockwork on the other hand, he's almost level six. Bloodseeker, he's almost level six too. So um, suicide solo to suicide solo. These guys are pretty much on par with one another. But as far as the person the persons are going against, they are quite behind. Uh, Clockwork not so much as Bloodseeker though. And there's a flare thrown up by Clockwork, trying to see if he can catch anybody, trying to see if he can give a little bit of vision. Does give a little bit of vision, and bless you, gonna be getting hit with that flare. A lot of, a lot of damage, 120 damage. One more flare, and he'll be, and his life will be gone. He has a magic wand, but he has no charge on. Meanwhile, oh, excuse me. Meanwhile, mid, we got Batrider trying to be as aggressive as possible. He has himself. Oh, oh, down bottom, we got a kill. Disruptive go in through out a thunderclap on top of him. Anti Mage came in for the uh, kill potentially, but. Disruptor said no bro, I'm, I'm gonna kill him for you first. And it was just a simple thunderclap, that's all it was. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Double oh boy, double damage shadow demon. He might be able to do some stuff now. We shall see, said the Dyer's blind man. A disruptor, not disruptor. Darkseer surges himself up so he can try to catch something around the corner. HM is taking a little bit of damage from that disruptor. Or from that shadow demon. Hitting for was at 128, if I'm not mistaken, which is actually quite a bit. Of course, as before, armor reductions. But uh, Shadow Demon might, or, yeah, he, actually, I was about to say, Shadow Demon might be, want to be a little bit careful. But Bloodseeker is here. Bloodseeker almost has a level 6, and Bloodseeker level 6 versus Anti Mage pretty much makes Anti Mage's life not, not, not as fun as he wanted it to be. Because if Anti Mage blinks away, I don't think I don't think he'll, he'll be able to blink far enough to actually make sure that his uh, the Rapture doesn't do any damage. You have to like travel. 
2000 and something distance before it actually doesn't do damage anymore. So we got Disruptor being a little bit aggressive. We got Ruben coming around the backside. Beautiful wraparound gank coming up from these guys. Disruptor throws out, throws out the Disruption on top of Antimage who is... Uh, hit with the ulti coming up for Blessinger. He doesn't really care anymore. Actually, he needs to start caring. Blessinger can officially move faster. He can actually turn around. So he might be able to. Nope. Clockwork throws out. <laughs> Clockwork throws out a flare, but the flare misses somehow. Uh, oh, never mind. They're on the same team. Totally missed that, guys. Whoops. Mess up on that. But yeah, Anti Mage, Clockwork on the same team. Not enough damage. But if they were on opposite teams, actually, speaking of which, up top, we got Clockwork getting caught up by the Gyrocopter. Like I said before. Like I said before, if Clockwork can pop his cogs. If he's quick on the trigger finger, he might be able to get away from that. Uh, meanwhile, down bottom, we got more action happening around the, around the block. We got Shadow Demon on the wrong side of the river once again. He did already go down once. Anti Mage is going to pick up the kill, and Ruby's going to be able to pick up this kill. Bless you, trying to do what he can to get the kill. If he was able to get that kill, thank he might you. be able to survive long enough. And Anti Mage saying, Thank you. Thank you for the damage boost, bro. And that is a level 1 silence. That's a 30% increase in all the damage. So 30% of 76 is not a whole lot, but it was enough to kill Blessing before Blessing could, could kill the Antimation. Meanwhile, we got Clockwork getting a beautiful, getting a beautiful hog around Garakot. The Garakot trying to do all the damage in the world. Clockwork, I, th I think he rappled a creep. That's probably not who he wanted, and he will actually be going now to the Garakot. Sad days. Sad days indeed, guys. Garakot is still alive, able to hold on to his life. Um, basically, the Ogre Club was the difference between his death and his life, and he's actually going to go ahead and throw a celebratory ulti to kill all these creeps and push the crap out of his lane as much as he possibly can. Uh, one thing to note in that engagement is that uh, Clockwork, like I said, I think he got his Rapple off on a creep. If that one went on a Garcopter, he might have been able to actually finish him off, because his Rapple would have done done a decent amount of damage. I mean, not, not all the damage in the world. 100 damage, that's like, what, 75 damage after reductions? So... 75 damage might have been the difference between Clockwork staying alive and Gyrocopter dying, or what just happened. Those darn creeps all up in the way. Meanwhile, Shadow Demon throws out a disruption on top of Antimates. That's only level 1 disruption. Antimates, 3 stacks of that. <coughs> 3 stacks of that Shadow Poison. Uh, he has no points inside of his mana shield, spell shield, so he's not actually getting protected from any of that. So he needs to be a little bit careful uh, from getting too many stacks on top of that. And as far as the items go, let me go and take a look at the items really fast so you guys can see this. Oh, oh, Antimage. Antimage is building himself. It looks to be a battle for you. So it's, by the looks of it, this will be a... Mm, I'm going to go ahead and call it a 20, 20 to 25 minute battle for you. Uh, he's, he's a little bit ways away from that. He did decide to build his full power trades up, and he um, he hasn't necessarily been getting fed kills per se. So his gold is not exponentially high, as you would see sometimes in uh, some of those pro games that we all like to talk about all the time. Moving on to the items, we see Mechanism up on Chin. I'm very happy to see that, but he has not left the jungle. He has not used his ability to push the lanes at all, and that's pretty much made... Well, actually, he hasn't really had to. Um, bottom, I was about to say, that's pretty much made uh, Blessinger's life a living heck, but Bottom is a long ways away from him to actually get to. Meanwhile, Blessing is doing all the damage... Uh, not Blessing, but Shadow Demon throws out a disruption on top of the anti There's ulti from Blessing throws out Rubik. Rubik decides to turn around stand still. Rubik stole the ulti from Blessing. He can actually use it on Blessing, and he does, and he gets the kill. Oh my god. Guys, what a way to die. Meanwhile, Shadow Demon on the run. Chin throws out a heal, saving the life of a Shadow Demon. And that's pretty much going to end all that aggression. But Rubik able to stay alive like a boss. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Anyway, Chin's in the jungle, just still farming away. Has a smoky deceit. I don't think he's actually going to be going for anything soon. Uh, he, he could potentially rotate and try to go for top, which would be a pretty easy kill for him to go for. But, I mean, Gyrocopter cannot probably get that on his own with just one rock, or with just one holy missile and one ulti. And that's a dead disruptor. Meanwhile, mid Bat Rider taking a little bit of damage from that Dark Seed. These guys are still going duking it out. Bat Rider blink dagger. Holy crap! Definitely a huge item to actually talk about. Uh, he has a double damage as well. He's gonna rotate top and possibly go for a kill on top of this Chin, who's actually running in the wrong direction. Chin needs to be a little bit careful. Chin, Chin, get away! Chin, why are you gonna run? There's a blink in from Bat Rider. Bat Rider is doing all the damage he can. Chin already popped his mechanism, so he won't be taking. Oh, so, he, so he ha he's a little bit more survivable than before. Garko turns around, throws out his ulti. He gets sent back home by Chin. I think, wait, no, he didn't get sent by him. Oh, 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 what just happened? Hold on, uh, we got Garcopter going down on the backside. I could have sworn, I could have sworn Garcopter got sent back by Chen, but, uh, he obviously didn't. That was totally Chen, or that was, that was totally Shadow Demon responding or something. Whatever that was. Bottom tower is under attack. Oh, oh, fight happening in the jungle over here somewhere around here. We got Blessing and catching out alone. Rubik, Rubik is silenced up, but Rubik does have Rapture. He can turn around and use it on top of, um, on top of that Blessing. We got Darkseed coming in to help out as well. Barrett throws out a casket, not really able to do much of anything. Clockwork's counting it out with that flare, and that's pretty much the end of all of that. All of that.
And Chen's still <clears throat> still holding on to that smoke of deceit with for dear life. Yep, I'm officially out of water. That's good. <clears throat> that means I have to go get some more water. Maybe maybe these guys like decide to you know hang hang back for a little bit and let me go get some water. Nah, they won't do that. I won't do that to you guys. Let's go ahead and continue the game. Looking at the gold graph, we can see the gold graph is in favor of the radiant. Not too not too surprising. Oh, we got disruptive throwing a glimpse on top of Darks here. A little bit too early. But how early is too early? Um, he possibly thought that Darkseid would have been put right back over here in this general area. But Darkseid was a little bit further away than he thought. Uh, Bowerda can go for a free kill on top of his Gyarkov, but he needs to be a little bit careful because Gyarkov's ulti is up. Uh, meanwhile, mid, we got the Rubik chasing around somebody. Just trying to see what, trying to see what we can get. Chen coming from the backside. Still does a crap ton of damage to Anti-Mage, who has no points in Spell Shield. He's trying to build his Battle Fury. Meanwhile, up top, we got Gyarkov going down to the Batrider. <coughs> Support coming in from Disruptor on the backside. <coughs> and a flare from Clockwork to fly into. Just, just a boot. Just a boot, guys. But Chen looks like, Oh, wait. Was that Chen or was that Batrider? Somebody. Somebody had a ring of health. That was a Disruptor. So Disruptor's going to be going for a 4 staff. Pretty good item for him to go for. Nice. 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 Decent item to go for. Gives him region. Gives him everything he wants. Disruptor catching out a Darkseer. A wild Darkseer appears. Meanwhile, everybody else is going to go in and jump right on in. Darkseer trying to do what he can to make sure he's got stay in. He's trying to juke that um, that casket, but the casket did come right into his face. HMH blinks away. Batrider will be able to blink away soon. Batrider picks himself up a ring of health. I think he's going for a Vanguard. Which, which I mean, it, um, it, it'll be before the 20 minute mark, likely. So, uh, it won't be as bad. Actually, hold on, he might be a little bit troll. Bless you, can throw his ulti on top of who's the clockwork. Clockwork the force to stand still. There's a glimpse back from Disruptor right on top of it, and Chin doing all the damage in the world. Antimage trying to help out his ally. There's an ulti coming off of Gyarakot. The clockwork bouncing around inside the clock. clock uh, <coughs> Gyarakov's able to pick up the ulti. Clockwork caught himself right on the edge of that ulti coming up from Gyarakov. The meanwhile, Batrider flying around the trees, Radiance trying to get away. And he does get away, but I don't think Rubik will be so lucky. Disruption coming up from Shadow Demon. His ulti's up as well. He can actually keep Rubik down uh, for as long as he wants. He gets a double damage instead of Rubik stole something. Rubik stole Rubik stole the Shadow Poison. That's really bad. Batrider catches the ulti on, on the backside of the top of Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon taking all the damage more. Here comes Chim with the heal. If Oh man, Shadow Demon might, might have been able to finish off the Rubik if he was throwing a Shadow Poison, but that's, I mean, dude, hindsight's 20-20. Uh, meanwhile, Rubik, TP back to base, he heals up. Oh my gosh, he still dies. That is a max Shadow Poison. That is a max Shadow Poison. <laughs> that is a max Shadow Poison. Oh man. The power of a max Shadow Poison. And that was not the perfect point. Meanwhile, uh, Clockwork taking all the damage in the world. Uh, we're coming out for Chen I mean, in his test of faith. There's a raffle coming out from Clockwork. These guys are caught inside of everything. These are all the ultis in the world. Garakov's ulti to fall on the backside. Garakov's are trying to run away, but Barrett is just being as, as, as big of a nuisance as he possibly can be. Glitz back from Disruptor on top of Blood Seeker. Barrett taking all the damage in the world. He's going to be going out soon. A few more on attacks is all he needs. Meanwhile, Shadow Demon comes in back in. He's already half HP. Clockwork caught him on the backside. He takes the ulti. He eats the ulti coming out from Shadow Demon. He's, he's going to be going out. There's nothing he can actually do. Shadow Demon able to pick up a kill on top of that. A double kill for the Shadow Demons. Meanwhile, down bottom, Anti Mage is pushing. Like I said before, uh, Anti Mage is really good at split pushing. Basically, his team is over here fighting, you know, just derping around in this general area. And Anti Mage is up here just pushing the crap out of that lane and farming at the same time. So he's getting close and close to this battle for you. Which will be, like I said, about the 20 Radiant's 25 minute mark. Probably more likely now the 20. 5 to 30 minute mark because he did die once, which is not the which is not the worst thing in the world, but it's gonna send him back a little bit. Let's be honest. Uh, we got Chin coming in on top of the uh, anti mage. Anti mage does he have a point seven spell shield? Is a good question. No points in spell shield at all. He has max blink and max mana burn. He's going for the full damage. He's going full retard, guys. And as we all know, you should never go full retard. But hey, it might pay off. If it does pay off, it'll make him pretty happy. That means he can be, um, because Antimate is getting so involved in his team fights uh, so early, um, having mana break is actually really nice. Especially when he's going up uh, going up against a Bloodseeker. Not so much Bloodseeker, because Bloodseeker pretty much throws his abilities and he doesn't he's he doesn't need mana anymore. But Darkseer, Shadow Demon, and Chen, you know, those those are really good people to actually continue or use your uh, mana break on. And having that maxed out, that's gonna drain their mana that much faster and also do a lot of do a crap ton of damage to the supports in the backside.
Oh, Gar comes here. Gar comes, might be able to go for the kill on top of him. There's a blink away, instant blink away coming up from Ace Mage. He's gonna, probably gonna go ahead and switch to Strength Treads and eat the damage coming up from that stun. Meanwhile, Gar comes still pushing. Uh, Ace Mage needs to be careful about where he actually gets stunned. Gar comes are not gonna be going for it. BKB is up on him. Big item to talk about. Meanwhile, we got a base trade, or we got a tower trades going on. We got TP coming in from Rubik down bottom. Radiant structures are fortified. Dire structures are not fortified just yet. This dude is gonna, you know, go, go, go ahead and let the tower tough it out. Why not? You can do a tower. Come on, be man. Get some hair in your chest. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. Stand up for yourself. And he falls down. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Meanwhile, Shadow Demon waiting for that rune. The rune will not be spawning for another 40 seconds. So uh, he's a little bit ways away from that. Disruptor sh uh, Force Staff. And that's a huge item for him to have. Um, as a support. He, um, as a support, not necessarily the one that's buying on the wars, but as a support, it's a really big item. That basically means he can actually help somebody out or help initiate a fight. Speaking of which, we got Blessing on the wrong side of the river. He needs to go ahead and run. Oh, he, he's on the right side, never mind. I thought he was on the wrong side, but we got a wraparound gank coming around on the backside. We got Clockwork waiting to see if he can find a Bloodseeker. He's not able to see Bloodseeker just yet. Chin is over here. He will be able to see a Chin, but Bloodseeker will be here to help out. And these guys are instantly going to turn around and try to go for it. We got a Pin and Stone on top of Clockwork. Clockwork taking on a lot of damage on the backside. Meanwhile, Batrider gets a Flame Break on top of the, or gets the ulti. Gets the last one on top of the Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker taking all the damage in the wall. We got Chin going down pretty darn fast. We got the Cascade throw up by, <laughs> by Batrider. Disrupted, almost saving the life of Bloodseeker. But not really, not really. We got Clockwork rotating and getting the last hit on top of that. And yeah, Force Step Disrupt is actually really cool. Because uh, what he can do is he can basically Force Step himself forward and throw out a glimpse, or Force Step himself forward and throw out a uh, wall to make sure you can't run away, or Force Step forward and Force Step Bat Rider forward and make sure Bat Rider can get his lasso up. So it's a lot of cool, cute little things that he Radiant's can actually do. And like I said before, Bat Rider attack. did go for a Vanguard, which means that he wants to be a little bit more survivable uh, whenever he does go and lasso somebody. So it's it's really cool for the for the mid game because not everybody's gonna be hitting all that hard. Like Gar Comfort, he's just now getting to his uh, 120 or 130 damage threshold, which means that uh, having damage block is probably gonna start being less and less effective, and having armor will start being more wanted, especially as the game goes later and later. And the general reason for that is because uh, damage block is a flat damage block. Like Vanguard will always block 20 damage for Batrider one of procs. And uh, having armor, armor is a totally different story. Um, for every one point of armor, you effectively increase your you you effectively increase your HP from physical damage attacks, physical auto attacks, by six percent. So if you have ten armor, you effectively increase your physical HP by sixty percent. We got Batrider blinking in. He kills himself with Disruptor. Disruptor will be able to. Uh, no, he will not be able to. He's selling stuff right now. He's in a lot of trouble. He's going to be going down on the backside. We got Chin throw out the heal. The heal is really late, and we got a glimpse coming up from Disruptor. Put him right back into his spot. Telekinesis from Rubik. Ulti coming up from Godfather. There's the ulti to fly from Blessing here. Batrider caught him around the backside. Meanwhile, Rubik going to be going going down on the backside for some apparent reason. We got Chin trying to do all he can. He's trying to do what he can, but it's not going to be enough. Disruptor able to get a double kill on top of that. Uh, see a wall going out the most random spot I can I, 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 wow that was a really bad spot uh, <laughs> Darkseer here is just gonna go ahead and throw an iron shell on top of Barra and say here's a new hat go away and Clockwork will be going down on the backside uh, but Bloodseer gets caught inside the cogs he's actually gonna be able to make it out thanks to that and Antimage might want to go ahead and blink away and he will blink away he got silenced up by the Bloodseeker Bloodseeker just make sure Antimage can't really blink in and do all the damage in the world but he actually does smell blood right now uh, I think he smells blood on top of whoever that was. He just died. Dyer's middle oh, no, 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 it's under attack. He still smells blood. Uh, he, um, it is maxed out, so whoever's below half HP, who was that? Uh, I don't know who that was, but whoever that was, they were taking all the damage. Uh, they, they were just basically making sure that Bloodseeker could actually see him. And Battlefield is up on Antimates. That is a 22 minute uh, Battlefield. We got the ulti from Bloodseeker throwing on top of Antimates. Antimates is a little bit trouble. We got the ulti throwing from Batrider on top of that Bloodseeker. Make sure Bloodseeker can't really run away. Antimates tried to blink away, like I said before. Uh, he couldn't blink far enough, and he actually took all the damage in the wall. Chin throwing out his mechanism. His heal's not really throwing out. Rubik throwing out a uh, Bloodseeker ulti on top of that Chin, and Chin a little bit trouble. Blood Ray throwing out on top of Disruptor. Disruptor doing all the damage in the world. Clockwork raffles in, throws on the cogs as well, and Darkseid is gonna go ahead and run away. He's sprinting as fast as possible can. Meanwhile, we got Disruption throwing on top of Batrider, make sure Batrider can't catch you by force that four on top of Ruby. Ruby telekinesis to Shadow Team right on back into the into the <laughs> into the toilet, and Shadow Team will be going out once again. My Jesus, guys. These guys, these guys do not want to end the fight. Uh, they want to keep fighting. And um, like I said before, Bloodseeker versus Anti-Mage. Uh, it's a really interesting matchup because Anti-Mage can technically get away from Bloodseeker, but he can't blink far enough to make sure that Rapture doesn't do enough damage. Like, uh, I, I can actually look at the numbers really fast, but 
Actually, no, I will. I will. So let me go ahead and alt tab and break everything and let OBS crash while I'm recording. J just for just for the points of reference, because I mean it's just important to know to know that I, I actually know what I'm talking about. For you guys to know that I actually know what I'm Radiant's talking about, because otherwise I mean like well I'll just watch the cast anyway. So uh, we get down bottom. We got Garkos are trying to get this bottom tower down. He just like three more auto attacks, in, but these guys say no. This guy's being killed, Joyce. Meanwhile, I got Blessing coming on top of Anti Mage. Anti Mage, he is hit with that ulti, and now he's actually gonna be killing himself on top of that Blessing. Dude. Blessing with the Blade Mail. Just like, yeah, bro, you can go ahead and kill yourself if you really want. But now he's out of mana. Bottom Tower does get denied at the end of the day, so Garakal is feeling pretty sad about that. Batrider just TPing in, or casually blinking in, I don't know. Casually walking towards the tower, denying it. We got a rotation coming in from Shadow Demon to the jungle. He will be able to see himself a Clockwork. He has a Haitian, though. So he could potentially go for some of these guys. We'll turn around and go for the kill on top of that. We got Barry to come on the backside. He will be able to get his ulti off on top of this Darkseer. Nah, he's gonna go for Chin instead. Probably should have one for Darkseer. Chin is not really the one you want to focus. Um, he can throw out his heal. That's really bad. He sounds up right now. He's coming time to drop the ulti. And all the damage in the wall is getting done. Garak the man's up. Pops his BKB. He says, hey bro, come back here. I'm gonna fight you. And these guys are trying to run away while they can. Uh, we got Disruptor, or sorry, Darkseer trying to do it. Trying to Throw a surge on top of. Uh, I don't know if he threw a surge on top of Garakov or his ulti, but whatever it was. Uh, Garakov's gonna go ahead and turn around. His BKB is all cooled out, and Ruby Telekinesis. Telekinesis won't be enough, and Ace Mage coming in just going to go for the cleanup crew. Ace Mage is saying, I hope you guys bought or <laughs> I hope you guys bought a mop because I'm about to clean up on this place. And uh, he pretty much just did that. Just, you know, showing up casually after he died from blood, so you can just kill everything he can. So now we have a little bit of time of peace. Let me go ahead and bring up the rest of these official official Radiant's facts about Bloodseeker's ulti. Attack. And we got a little bit of TP coming in down bottom. Clockwork wants to see if he can find some Bloodseeker. If he lands it, he might be able to go for the kill. He lands it, he's gonna go for the rap, or he's gonna go for the power cogs. He's doing all the damage in the world. Bloodseeker throws out the uh, blade melt, but it won't stop him from taking any damage. And he's actually gonna get healed up by Chin. So he'll actually be able to turn around and turn the fight. Darkseer, oh no, Darkseer, Clockwork taking all the damage in the world. Will he be going now? Disrupted with a beautiful glimpse, but it's not fast enough. Bloodseeker able to pick up the kill, getting all the heal in the world, and Disrupted not gonna be able to follow up. The glimpse took a little bit too long to actually activate, but Bloodseeker almost, almost, or not Bloodseeker, Clockwork almost made it alive. And yes, as far as Rapture goes, uh, see, there we go. If the affected unit moves more than 1,300 distance in .25 seconds, it will not receive any damage. So, h uh, just to put that into perspective, h can only blink a maximum of 1,150, which is, I mean, it's, it sucks. It's, it's like he, he can't, he can't avoid the damage at all. Double down on sorcery. Double damage anti mage. He's going for what looks to be a heart, the first piece of a heart that's a vitality booster, as opposed to going for a Yasha and two Mets style. Which, which I mean, I'm, I'm a huge fan of 3 a.m. I just gotta say, but this, the smoke is gonna be instantly uh, revealed. Garakata will be going down on the backside. We got the ulti coming up the battle. We got the ulti coming up for the disrupted. These guys really want that kill. Rubik stole flat cane or Rubik stole rocket barrage. I really want to see him use that. Come on, Rubik, use it. And we got a giant stack over here of Ancients, and these guys are going to stack it for him again. Uh, they, actually, they almost did. Meanwhile, we got it mid. We got a Blood Seeker throwing the ultimate on top of Anti Mage. Anti Mage can't do anything but stand still and try to fight. This is why he needs a uh, Mage Star or potentially a BKB. A uh, BKB won't save his life anymore, actually. So, just don't know what I just said. Meanwhile, the fight's breaking out right here. We got everybody doing all they can. Shadow Demon use all his abilities, right? He's going to move right back into the fight. Meanwhile, we got Rubik trying to steal something from that Blood Seeker. Blood Seeker said, hey, bro, you ain't going to steal a squat from me. And actually gets a kill on top of him. Meanwhile, we got Bat Rider on the run. These guys just Completely ignore him. They want to go for Clockwork instead. Dux's wall is dropped down, but nobody's going to walk through it. Sadly, and uh, Batrider, he's going to force stuff forward. He, uh, somebody got silenced stuff. I didn't see who it was. Uh, he blinks away Garkov. Batrider blinks away Garkov to ulti the fall. Meanwhile, we got the BKB popped by Garkov. He wants to go for this kill on top of Clockwork. He'll be able to go for it if he really wants to, but he's not going to go for it. Batrider ulti coming out on top of whoever that was. Is that a Bless Seeker? Yes, it was a Bless Seeker. And he's actually going to keep going. He wants more. He wants more for the kill. Or he wants more kills. Chen on the wrong side of the river once again. And he actually forced step forward. Chen. Or sorry, four steps forward. Uh, Disruptor actually gets a few auto attacks off. And there's a kill going down. Barrow is on the wrong side of the river now. Uh, he's getting hit with the penance. And Barrow trying to get the kill on top of Darkseer. Darkseer moving a little bit too fast. Juke and bobbing and weaving. And these guys cannot find him. Oh my gosh. Jukes for days is all I gotta say. But he has no TP right now. He's actually gonna firefly and try to make it out alive. Uh, he will be able to make it out alive because nobody cuts him off. But he's out of mana, so he can't really make it all that far. And we got Blinks coming out. On, all around the map. Anti Mage coming in. He wants to go for the kill on top of Garakata, but that's very, very, very unwise, especially with all the support that he has around the backside. And I think I finally have a moment to breathe, guys. I think I have a finally, mo I finally have a moment to breathe.
Whew. All right, so what just happened? Well, really, really all it was was the di the Radiant decided to stay around a little bit too long. And, yeah, it, it, and by the way, guys, I, I know before I said I was going to try to call these guys by name, but come on, there's too much is going on to call these guys by name. In my defense, in my defense, a lot is going on already. It, it, it takes me a lot longer to register Getsu as Antimage as opposed to just saying Antimage. So, um, sorry, sorry in advance to the players, but, yeah, that happens. Items! I was going to take a look at the items. We see a Arcane Boots up on Disruptor, Mechanism on his well, and Force Staff. Force Staff, the one item I pointed out before. Earner Shadows on Rubik. That's a really interesting thing that actually for him to have. Um, that basically attack. gives us some nice region uh, for what he for his intelligence is. It gives us a really nice e region. It also gives us some really... Well, not the best stats in the world, but some affordable HP stats to make sure he doesn't die as fast in the team fights. As we saw before, it basically took him a little bit longer to actually kill the Rubik. He was actually able to steal a spell and not use it uh, before he actually died. And Blessed Secret smells blood right now. Uh, these guys see somebody, they see a anti-mage, but anti -mage, uh, they see an anti-mage, really? They saw an anti-mage, but anti-mage, they make it all, or make it back away. Yasha's up on Blessing, and he will be going for either Sanji Yasha or Mantis style. I really do hope he goes for a Mantis style, because Sanji Yasha, it's, it's a little bit late for Sanji Yasha right now. And the main reason, the main reason why I say that is because a Mantis style would be really cool, uh, especially when you have a, uh, well, yeah, 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 it, it, it just will be really cool. There's just no reason why, there's no other reason why I'm saying that. It just would be really cool to see a Mantis style on Bloodseeker. But typically you see a um, Sanji Yasha up on Blessing instead. Sheepstick coming up on Batrider, he's, what is that? Uh, I can't do the math fast enough. 8 minus 12, whatever that number is. We got Blessing throwing his ultimate this fight. It will be happening around the backside. Antimage is getting caught out once again. He's trying to go for all the damage in the world on top of Blessing. Blessing is taking all the damage on the backside. We got the truck throwing the glyphs and everybody's doing all they can. Meanwhile, Barra's ultimate coming out and Blessing can heal him like a madman. Holy crap, how's he still alive? Uh, chin throwing all the heals. This is the heal meta, guys. We got instant buyback coming up with Blessing. The fight's still happening on the backside. Gaokar the BKB up. He's manning up. He wants to go for the kill, kill on top of Clockwork. Clockwork gonna be able to make it out alive. Gaokar is not gonna be able to make it through those cogs. Those cogs did block the way perfectly. And Batrider. Batrider running away with his tail tucked between his legs. <laughs> he doesn't want to pin this fight anymore. He uh, throws out the flame break, pushes a Ursa Warrior forward, and the Ursa Warrior does a little bit more damage. Finally goes down. And, uh,. His blessing, his blessing, he smells blood. Holy crap, he's going straight in from top, on top of Disruptive. Disruptor knows he's in a lot of trouble. Uh, he can't do anything but force that forward and pray to God that Blessing doesn't keep chasing blood. But Blessing is ulting up. He can actually use it for a quick nuke and actually is able to get the kill on top of that. Meanwhile, we got Batrider on the backside. He's trying to run away as well. If he goes below half HP, Blessing would definitely spot him out and probably go for the kill. But he does not spell anything just yet. He's actually raging himself up. That is a level 4 rage, so that's a lot of extra damage. So he's getting 120% of his base damage as uh, extra damage. So that's a lot of extra damage, guys. And he's attacking fast. Not the fastest in the world, but he's attacking pretty darn fast. His attack speed is currently 0.66, which is 0.33 faster than the max attack speed. Because 0.33 is actually the maximum attack speed that you can have. That puts you at uh, essentially three attacks per second. Pretty darn fast, especially with Alchemist World. Well Meanwhile, we got Anti Mage. Uh, Anti Mage, uh, Bat Rider, sad face on that Bat Rider. Trying to see if he can go for a kill on top of Chin. Decide, doesn't like what he saw because he saw everybody was there and backs away very smartly. So, this Anti Stack is getting huge. That that last one didn't stack, but it doesn't matter. These guys need to go ahead and kill it. That's a lot of XP just waiting on them. I think Shadow Demon is slowly but surely working on it. These guys are finally finally grouping up to go for it. They need Garakup to here though. And he, he, okay, Garakup's right there. So Garakup will be returning to help these guys kill the ancient stack. That's a lot of XP going towards both the supports and also to Garakup to himself, mainly supports. And uh, let's go ahead and look at the levels so we can. Oh, oh, wrong button. Uh, levels. There we go. Hero levels. As you can see, hero levels. Blood Seeker is actually level 20. Holy crap. Um, when did that happen? But Blessing here, he's uh, level 20, which means he's he has level 3 of his ulti, which translates into a lot of extra damage. That's really what it translates into. Um, it makes it last longer. It makes it do a it makes it do a bigger burst damage on the initial throw. So that means it does a, what's that 350 pure damage. Okay, it's, it's not pure damage. It's HP removal, but uh, HP removal might as well be pure damage, guys. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. HP uh, HP. HP removal cannot be reduced by anything. Uh, I think pure damage can be reduced by magic damage if you have enough of it, but I, I, I'm, I'm not too sure about that. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not too sure on that. Disruptor is invisible right now. He's trying to scout out everything, trying to let these guys know who's where. Um, there's nobody with a shadow blade, so nobody really knows or nobody really cares if there's a uh, 
into this person. We got the fight breaking out around the back. So we got Clockwork throwing a battery assault right on top of Blessing. Blessing doesn't really care. He throws off the ulti on top of him. He's trying to throw the ulti on top of uh, Clockwork, but he's not going to be able to get it. We get, he's actually on the run right now. Uh, he is silenced up by Rubik. Rubik, really nice play on top of that. Meanwhile, we got the people down on the backside. Doctor did go down. We got a Shadow Demon trying to run away. He gets raffled. But, or, he got raffled by Clockwork and Clockwork just finished him off. Meanwhile, Gara comes manning up, trying to go for the kill. And uh, Mega Kill for Bower. Holy crap. Uh, Ace Mage is really, really trying to see if he can go for a kill. He blinks forward and he won't be able to actually go for it. Gara comes a little bit too far away. He can actually throw on his ulti and potenti po potentially, potentially, potentially slow somebody and make them take a little bit more damage. But that's really about it. Because these guys did dive pretty darn hard for all those kills. So as far as the state of the game goes, we can always tell those by, or sorry, we can always tell that by the gold graph. The gold graph shows that the Radiant do have a gold lead, which means that they have slightly better items, if not significantly better items. Moving over to the Radiant side, of, or moving on to the XP graph, you see the Radiant is a little bit ahead of XP graph. Um, as, I say, as I always say about the XP graph, the XP graph is re relatively irrelevant. Yeah, relatively irrelevant because the longer longer the game goes on, the closer close to to zero. But it's still a really nice indicator where everybody is right now. Is at this point in time, as you can see, the dire were starting to get a little bit more, more and more and more of advantage. But then it just started spiking right back up towards the radiant, mainly because of that team fight that they just had. Um, that's really, that's really the only team fight. Oh man, we got, I hear Batrider ulti. Batrider ulti happening on the back side. We got a big team fight. Disrupting the lines, ulti throwing his wall, and um. A lot of damage getting done to the support. Supports both going down right on the backside. They're actually is technically support right now. Uh, Gar comes again, turned to a piggy. He's going to be going down. A lot of damage getting done to him. And Chin trying to do what he can. He got glimpsed back, so he needs to go ahead and take his blessings and run away. Uh, Disruptor trying to do what he can. Uh, Chin trying to micro his his creeps the best he could, but these guys did catch up. Rubik throwing telekinesis and Chin taking all the damage. Whoa. Gar comes in. Buys back, TP's in, he wants to go for the damage, and Blessing is here, these guys can go for it. Garkov the ult again, thrown down, everybody's standing inside of it. Now there's a flat cannon coming from Garkov, the Rubik stole the flat cannon, oh uh, no, he stole Calder, holy crap, a big spell for him actually still, that can make sure Garkov can't keep up with, his, uh, with these guys, and the Destructor throws out the glimpse on top of the, <laughs> on top of the Bloodseeker. But Antime still dies at the end of the day because he tried to blink away. Uh, meanwhile, Batrider getting chased by Blessing. There's no way he can actually run. Blessing gets turned into a piggy, but that piggy can still, still smell blood. And Batrider's in a lot of trouble. And look how fast he's moving. Holy crap. That is max attack speed. Guys. That's, that's max move speed, guys. That is max move speed based off of him smelling blood, a Yasha, and, a, uh, and some power traits. And he's going to be able to catch up to his Batrider pretty darn fast. Collins come out from Clockwork. There's a blatant ult thrown by Batrider, uh, by uh, Bloodseeker, and there's a glimpse thrown from Disruptor, actually saving the life of uh, Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker would have died otherwise. Got to cut the cover on the backside, trying to cover, cover the back of Bloodseeker, make sure he can actually get out alive. And uh, mission successful, mission Black Hollow down successful, got to cut the backs away. And so ends a very exciting, uh, yet another very exciting chapter of Radiant vs. Dire. These guys are basically fighting over the river, that's what they're really doing. And Agon sets us up on Clockwork, so that means uh, some really cool, some really cool things coming up from him. Hopefully, really cool hooks. We got disrupt or Shadow Demon trying to trying to use the illusion to tank up with Sean. Um, you can do this, guys. Um, a lot of people are are, 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 are under the misperception that uh, your illusions will instantly die as soon as they come next to Rashawn. But the way it actually works is uh, if your illusions try to attack Rashawn, then they die. But if you just stand your illusions right or like right around this corner, right around that corner, then you can basically let Rashawn wail on them all you want. So we got Rashawn by to go down, Rashawn does go down, Aegis gets picked up by Garakopter, and Garakopter gets surged away um, by, by Shadow D nah, by Darkseer to make sure he can actually, or make sure he won't die from any impending damage coming to him. Just, you know, basically wasting Aegis, essentially. So no MKB yet up on Garakopter, makes me pretty sad. But he is building towards a man style, which makes me happy as well. Uh, he is going to be going for, come on, come on, pick up the Demon Edge, Oh. He's going to be going for his man style first. He has a BKB. He can pretty much go for whatever he wants. And a heart and stuff on Antimage. And honestly, honestly, I, I really don't think Antimage needs, needed to go for a heart. Um, what, what he actually needs now is, or what he actually needed was to just farm up his other items, which is just a man style. And, um, well, on a man style and then a heart, I guess. I mean, j just at least get a Yasha. I mean, Yasha for a little bit more damage. Because right now, Antimage's damage is not as impressive as Garakup's damage, which is... Uh, actually, no. They're, they're, they're both not impressive, in my personal opinion. As Bloodseeker's damage, heck yeah, let's call it like that. But no, um, anti is only hitting for, what is that, 100 and... I can't do the math fast enough. 100 and, 175 or something like that, and Bloodseeker's hitting for about the same. So, um, 
technically, technically, Ancient Mage's damage is, is is a little bit more impressive than I'm trying to give him credit for. But I'm I'm, I'm just trying to make myself sound right and get here, guys. And it's not working. It's totally not working. It totally backfired in my face. So let's just move on. Pretend that didn't happen. Clockwork has an Aghanim scepter, and he's also building himself a Blade Mail now, which would be pretty nice. And a Shadow Blade up on Blessing. I was saying, I said, I mentioned this earlier. And when I was saying, there's no, there's no, nobody has been using invisibility or all that much. So there's no, uh, nobody actually actively buying Century Wards. But with Blessing and picking up a Shadow Blade, that's actually a really nice choice for him to go for. I mean, it, it probably only, it probably will only work for like maybe the first two or three times that the enemy team gets caught by it. But afterwards, I mean, it, and pretty much afterwards, it'll just be a nice little attack speed slash move speed boost. But th those initial times do really matter, especially when we're, when we're this late into the game. Uh, we're about 40 minutes into the game. Pretty much anybody who dies will stay dead for probably at least 40 seconds, even the supports. So bless you can scout out everything, try to see what he can find. No sentry wards over around here. These guys do not know that there's an invisible bless you can, But if he does walk over here around the corner, they will definitely know. Because there's a sentry plus an observer over here, and they'll definitely be able to spot him out. Meanwhile, bless you can try to see what he can uh, try to just, just, you know, playing that game of running around. Actually, if he, if he runs a little bit too close to that sentry ward, he might be going out. But he's probably probably trying to avoid the main spots where you expect to see sentry which is basically over here. Right there, where you guys see a sentry and observer, and right over here, where you see a sentry and observer. And uh, clockwork, he will not. Oh man, just barely, just barely missed that uh, blessing here. Maybe these guys do know he um, that he has a shadow blade. I, I, I honestly think they might know that he has a shadow blade. They're trying to see if they can find any blessing around here. I th I, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure they saw a blessing walk over here, so they're trying to search all around the place. But it's just going to be reclaimed, as you guys saw right there, in three, about three minutes. Just a little bit under three minutes. And Invis Rune up on Disruptor. So Disruptor, if anything, Disruptor will, will be able to scout out that Blood Seeker who is invisible right now. And actually, these guys did see that Disruptor. Oh, no, no, they did not. But Blood Seeker trying to, trying to, trying to be as sneaky as he possibly can. Trying to play Secret Agent in Blood Seeker. Trying to be as a uh, trying to be a super secret spy, and we got these guys coming around the corner. Blessing is here. He might be able to actually go in for a kill on top of straight up on top of somebody. Guy comes and comes right in. He says, "Bro, I'm a man. I'm gonna go ahead and go for a quick kill on top of you, and make sure you can't do anything." Clockwork getting instant kill. Meanwhile, Rubik on the backside, he goes down as well. Ulti coming out from Batrider on top of that. Duxy, Duxy is not gonna be able to do much of anything. Uh, he threw out his back, and I think that's all he really got to throw out. And we got all the damage in the world on top of Antimage. He goes down as well. Instant buyback coming out from Rubik, and all the damage in the world come on top of Chin, but not enough damage. Not not as much damage as I was giving him credit for. And Rubik still the rocket barrage, cool. But Batrider on the backside, he's actually taking the damage from the rocket barrage. He's trying to run away. He has a Vanguard. His Vanguard actually keeping him alive, to be honest. And Batrider will be able to blink away in a few more seconds. But Bat but Garcopter just doing just doing too much damage. That flat cannon, guys. I totally told you guys that flat cannon range it does increase his range. Um, and he and Batrider just just not able to blink away because of it. And I, I, I'm actually honestly now thinking about it, I, I don't even think the flat cannon was active in that entire time. So. Ignore that statement I just made. Garko was just close enough to actually out attack him. And he was out attacking fast enough. And there's a blood rays thrown from Blood Seeker on top of that Garko to make sure Garko can do a little bit more damage. His damage right now is quite ridiculous. And now it just went right back down to where it was before. But Shadow Blade Blood Seeker. Shadow Blade Blood Seeker is actually a really cool thing to break the middle push death ball type thing that the uh, Radiant were going for. Uh, Disruptor gets hit with the ulti from Blood Seeker. Blood Seeker. Gets one to right and back. Gotta cut the ult again going out. Call it. Oh, Disruptor. Disruptor, be careful. Disruptor might be going out. He will not be going out. He needs to actually keep running. I'm not too sure why he stopped. But okay, there we go. He keeps running. Age is going to be reclaimed in about 56 seconds. Uh, we will most likely see another team fight happen right before that because Batrider will be back alive. Uh, the question is will the Aegis still be up when, it, when the Gotta Cop actually falls? And the Gym of True Sight perches on top of Disruptor. Like I said before, um, the Shadow Blade will probably work out for like maybe you know like the first two or three times at the rate and see it, but I mean it, it won't be long before they actually buy some form of detection. And a gym on Disruptor, Disruptor of all people actually really nice person to have, to have it. Uh, we got Shadow Blade activated, but Blessing and Blessing are trying to away. He's actually going to hide in the corner. And there we go. The gym is actually used. Blessing is in a lot of trouble. He's going to be getting caught out. These guys are just instantly going to jump on top of him. Bowered, I'm not bad. Blessing your pops is late mail. Doesn't really do much. But sit there and look pretty, and now Bloodseeker knows the jig is up. He knows that his Shadow Blade is not as impressive as it was before. Five seconds for Aegis Reclaim, and Gyarokov is nowhere near dying right now. Um, unless, unless the creeps want to kill him. So his Aegis will be going away. He has another slot to build himself an MKB, though. He has a butterfly up. So that's a, that's a nice item for Gyarokov to have, but MKB, I honestly would prefer to see MKB, mainly because it 
just makes Radiant's sure that you can't miss. Um, just, 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 just a little bit of insurance for when the uh, bef for before Anti Mage builds himself a man style himself or butterfly himself. Meanwhile, we got Barrow to catch himself a free. Uh, what's that? Darkseer? Darkseer Dark Seer caught inside of everything. He can't really run away. Uh, there's a nice little wall, and there's also a silence on top of him. And disruptor ulti. That's another thing I'm talking about. Disruptor's ulti. It, oh, no, I, th I thought it had 45 seconds. Bottom tower is I was just about to say, Disruptor's ulti, can, um, it doesn't really have that long of a cooldown, so it's really cool to just throw it out whenever team fight, or whenever something like that does happen. But 80 second cooldown. That's it's kind of borderline long cooldown. Um, essentially, uh, tor especially towards the later end of the game, uh, you expect to see a team fight happen there about every minute. Especially since now that everybody has their cool items and they want to go and fight and stuff. So, uh, Disruptor's ulti is probably on cooldown for like the first 20 seconds of the team fight, which could mean the difference between him being alive and him being dead. It could make all the difference because Disruptor will fall pretty darn fast. He only has about 1500 HP versus a Bat Rider who has 2300 HP. And I guess, to be more fair, let's, let's compare it to Shadow Demon, who has significantly less, relatively speaking. Uh, Sanji Yasha did come up on Blessing, that's a very late Sanji Yasha, but it's a Sanji Yasha, and none, nonetheless, um, that lesser main will definitely be able to help out. Or sorry, that's a greater main. Crap, I, I keep getting those mixed up. That greater main will definitely be able to come Dyer's back and help out uh, whenever, whenever he's chasing somebody. Just make sure they can't run away all that much. Um, we could we could even potentially see Bloodseeker transition into a Mantis style uh, Heaven's Halibut, because that is something that you can most definitely do. Because you can disassemble a Sanji and Yasha into back and back into a Yasha and a Sanji, and then build a Heaven's Halibut and a Mantis style. That I mean, it's kind of implied. But Rashawn responds in two minutes. It's, oh man, there might be a fight happening around there. The question is, did these guys write down the timer for that? And this actually turned out to be a really exciting game, of course, of course, I totally expected that from the Reddit photo forums, so definitely a huge shout out to the Reddit casted forums for letting me have the opportunity to cast this. And we got Bat Rider once again casting somebody in the jungle, who's this time? It is a Chin, a wild Chin appears, and Chin's taking all, a little bit of damage, he's getting caught by the back wall, not where he wants to be in uh, at all, and he's actually going to be taking all the damage as well, he will be going down, uh, the whole entire team shows up as well. <laughs> <laughs> run wild, run wild wing ripper. Run. Gets tornadoed up, and he might be. Act hey, will he be going up? He's he's gonna go deny himself to creeps. The creep is gonna go deny himself to creeps. What sense does it make, guys? What sense does that make? So 85 gold to, <laughs> 85 gold to Gryffindor. Or so they would say. So, um, big items coming up all around the map. As you guys see, there's a butterfly up on Garakup, like I called before. Uh, Sanji Yashin Blessing, that's not necessarily a huge item, but it's item nonetheless. And we got a, ooh, ooh, we got a little bit of skirmish happening over here. We got a Blessing coming close to a Batrider, and Batrider catches off the Darkseer. Once again, Darkseer has been dying pretty good early, and he, he like, I, I have yet to actually see him use a, um, use a wall back here. Like, he actually might be able to use it right now. Uh, if he does decide to turn around, he's trying to turn around with Batrider, sticking in palms, just OP as crap, and he can't really do anything. He needs to go ahead and throw in a wall, he needs to go ahead and throw a vacuum. He, he gets a wall, he gets a vacuum, but it's not in the best spot in the world, but it doesn't really matter. His team is here to wipe up everybody else who's trying to run away. Bat, not bad, right there. Uh, Antimage. Antimage is taking, all, uh, taking a lot of damage. Plus, he decides to turn his efforts elsewhere and kill the clockwork instead, and he'll still be able to chase the Antimage as well. Uh, Antimage did get. Uh, no, he has a heart, I forgot. He's getting healed up because of the heart. And now Blessing is going in. He's doing uh, as much damage as he possibly can. He gets a greater maim, which is nice, but Antimage. Antimage is uh, nice and healthy right attack. now. That heart OP. That heart OP. Chin trying to come around the corner. Trying to see if he can catch him, but nobody, nobody's here left. Everybody decided to run. And Chin trying to build himself Agonim Scepter, which is pretty much a free global mechanism. That's all it is. And we finally got 3 a.m. It took him 45, 47 minutes to go 3 a.m., but he did go 3 a.m. nonetheless. So it's finally 3 a.m. time, guys. Woohoo! Celebrate! So it's a heart, and it's a battle fairy, and there's a uh, style, and there's power treads upon anti so he's pretty much... He, he's four-slotted. He, um, he, actually, he's three-slotted. He needs booster travels uh, instead of power treads, but he also needs a butterfly, and he also needs a... Well, he doesn't need, but it'll be nice for him to have a butterfly. And it'll be really nice for him to have a... I don't know, what? anti built build a Desolator? Or not Desolator. God, ignore me. Um, not Desolator. Daedalus, that's what I'm going to say. They both start with Ds, guys. Come on, give me a break, give me a break, guys. And honestly, this is what Antimate should have been doing a long time ago. Just basically blinking all over the jungle, killing everything for about 20 minutes, and then showing up to team fights. 
Uh, this anti mage has been really focused, or sorry, get to only anti mage. He's really been focused on joining the team fights. Um, as you guys can see, can see from his build, he maxes blink and he maxes mana break, which means what tells me that he wants to be as aggressive as possible in these team fights. He wants to show up to the team fight, hit you three times, make sure you have no mana, do anything, and also kill you. Anyway, we got team fight breaking around the backside. We got Ulti coming from Batman on top of Blessing, make sure he can't really do anything. Blessing is really tanking his crap. Uh, we got all the damage and more coming on the backside. Gaku with the ulti getting, uh, Everybody getting caught on Gaku with the ulti. Everybody trying to run away. Rubik will be going down on the backside. Antime is going to be going down as well. And Darkseer actually surviving for once. Uh, Blessing your ulti getting thrown on the clockwork. Clockwork will be going down. Wall from Disrupted Throne. And Bloodseeker, will he be able to catch up to the Shadow Demon? It's a good question. Or will, will he be able to catch up to that Disruptor? It's a good question. Meanwhile, on the backside, we got Batrider still trying to run away. He forced up himself forward. He will be able to blink away soon. He blinks away. And Bloodseeker's here. Just going to meet him up. Say, hey, bro. Yo, bro. <laughs> Yo, bro. I heard you like my kips. And, uh... Is Batrider going to be going out soon? His fire fire just did just come off cooldown, but it wasn't fast enough. Oh, it is coming up from Gyrocopter. And Bloodseeker like a bloodhound, just making sure that Batrider had nowhere to run. Who needs backdoor protection when you have Bloodseeker? Actually, the, um, he, he needs to rage again. Oh, never mind, there you go. Radiance bottom tower has fallen. And that will be guys, that will be a free roll shot for these guys. Even even if anti mage decides to come in and try to steal it, I mean he's pretty much gonna die. That's what's gonna happen. That's exactly what's gonna happen. So plus here you're gonna go ahead and start off on top of Roshan. Roshan taking a huge chunk of damage already. Not much else to say about that. Clockwork scouts it up. Excuse me, Clockwork scouts it out, but won't be able to do much of anything. Uh, Disruptor has himself an ultimate orb. I'm, I'm really curious to see who he goes for. Um, I think he's going to be going for a sheep stick, but he's not going to be have the, be able to have that anytime soon. I mean, that's going to take him a long time to get it. The ultimate orb is really nice item for him to have, though, because it gives him stats. And look at the gore graph. The Dire have been have been extremely scrappy in this game, guys. I can say that much. You can at least say that much for them. And they're really in a really nice advantage right now, despite what the gore graph says. The XP graph tells you a little bit better tale of how the Dire is doing. They're doing, well, like I said, a little bit better. Um, e even though even though the Radiant do have more hero kills, those are more in the early game. The Dire have been getting their hero kills in the later game, and they've also been getting kills on the important people, the people who are higher levels, like Antimage or people like Rubik. Oh, sorry, not Rubik. People like Batrider. And um, they're pretty much able to capitalize on the mistakes that anybody's making. And oh, 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 this is a cool thing. This is a cool thing to point out. Chen's just building himself a Vladimir's Offering. So the question some people ask is, like, why, why the heck would Chen build a Vladimir's Offering? He doesn't get life steal from it. And the reason for that is basically because if he gets a Vladimir's Offering, that means that Bloodseeker doesn't have to give or get one. And also makes his creeps, uh, whatever creeps that he does pick up that are melee, that makes them a little bit more survivable. And on top of that, Vladimir's Offering is not just for life steal. Vladimir's Offering gives you a 15% increase in your just general damage, just 15% increase in bonus damage, or sorry, 15% bonus damage. So that's basically, that basically means that Bloodseeker will hit for 15% more of 175, or 172, which is quite a bit, especially when you uh, consider that everybody's getting that buff, including Chin himself and all his creeps, so that's a lot of extra damage, there you go, Vladimir's Offering or go on top of everybody. And oh, oh. And by the way, there's a Satar Conqueror, which increases everybody's damage. Was it 30%? Or is it just 30? Oh no, it's just moves speed. Never mind, never mind. Radiant structures are if fortified. it was a wolf, oh man, Radiant Structures are fortified for no apparent reason. These guys did not need to use that fortified. This ulti coming up from Batrider, these guys are going to go pull in Bloodseeker. Disrupted coming up from Shadow Demon on the backside, very nice. And there's the ult, uh, there's a Shiva Scar coming from Batrider. A lot of damage getting done to Clockwork. Clockwork almost melting, essentially. And Batrider trying to do what he can, but he's taking a lot of damage around, uh, taking a lot of damage around the backside. Uh, he will be going out finally, and that's a triple kill coming up. And that's the Dire essentially winning the game, guys. That's a Dire essentially winning the game. Uh, Gyro comes trying to do what he can. Will he be able to actually do anything? I'm oh, sorry, um, will, will anti mage be able to actually do anything to kill a that's, that's, totally what I meant. that's totally what I meant, guys. And there's a right on Gyrocopter, holy crap, I didn't realize that. He has ages though, so he doesn't care. GG well played, throw out by Disruptor. GG well played, throw it all around. GG well played indeed. That was an extremely GG well played. Um, pr pretty balanced for the most part. <laughs> Very fun and challenging game, yes. And that's why you see coming from Darkseid, because like Darkseid kept getting like picked off every single fight. But anyway, um, that was the end of the game. That was a very interesting game. Reddit, Reddit did not disappoint on their first debut match that I've done in my, my uh, series stuff. So shout out to Reddit, of course. Shout out to the cast for or 
I don't know, slash R cat. Well, I, I, I don't know how that works. I don't know how Reddit works. What, what's, what, what's, what's this internet you speak of? Anyway, so um, my name is Cool Blue. I hope you guys enjoy the cast, and that's pretty much the end of this. Oh, and also, um, this this cast was sent in with air quotes was sent in by the Rubik. So thank you, Namiator, for sending this game. This is actually oh, he was actually on the losing team. Uh, surprise, surprise. But thank you, Namiator, for sending this game. This game was most definitely interesting to watch. And uh, I hope to cast some more Reddit games in the future. So, anyway, if you guys like the cast, definitely um, likes, comments, you know, subscribes, and all those fancy stuff. And uh, I'll see you guys whenever.